just wanted to start off by saying, if you want an answer at the end, prepare to be disappointed. There just isn't one. I was an intern at Nickelodeon Studios for a year in 2005 for my degree in animation. It wasn't paid, of course, most internships aren't, but I did have some perks beyond education. To adults, it might not seem like a big one, but to most kids, they would go crazy over it. Now, since I worked directly with the editors and animators, I got to view the new episodes days before they were aired. I'll get right to it without giving too many unnecessary details. They had very recently made a Spongebob movie, and the entire staff was somewhat sapped of creativity, so it took them longer to start up the new season. But the delay lasted longer for more upsetting reasons. There was a problem with the Series 4 premiere that set everyone back several months. Me and the other interns were in the editing room, along with the lead animators and sound editors for the final cut. We received the copy that was supposed to be Fear of a Krabby Patty, and we gathered around the screen to watch. Now, given that it isn't yet the final animations, the animators often put a mock title card, some sort of inside joke for us, with phony or often lewd titles such as How Sex Doesn't Work instead of Rockabye Bee Valve. When Spongebob and Patrick adopt a sea scallop, nothing particularly funny but work-related chuckles. So when we saw the word Squidward Suicide, we didn't think more than a morbid joke. One of the interns did a small throat laugh at it, the happy-go-lucky music plays as normal. The story began with Squidward practicing his clarinet, hitting a few sour notes like normal. We hear Spongebob laughing hard outside and Squidward stops, yelling at him to stop because they had a concert for tonight. Spongebob says okay, and goes to see Sandy with Patrick. Bubbles splash and the screen comes up to see the ending of Squidward's concert. This was when things began to seem off. While playing, a few frames repeat themselves, but the sound doesn't. But when he stops playing, the sound finishes as if the skip never happened. There is a slight murmuring in the crowd before they begin to boo him. Not a normal cartoon booing that is common in the show, but you could very clearly hear the malice in it. Squidward's in full frame and looks visibly afraid. The shot goes to the crowd with Spongebob in the center of the frame. He too is booing, very much unlike him. That isn't the oddest thing though. What is odd is everyone had really real looking eyes. Very detailed, clearly not shots of real people's eyes but something a bit more real than CGI. The pupils were red. Some of us looked at each other, obviously confused. But since we weren't the writers, we didn't question its appeal to children yet. The shot goes to Squidward, sitting on the edge of his bed, looking very forlorn. The view out of the porthole window is a night sky, so it isn't very long after the concert. The unsettling part is that there's no sound. Literally, no sound. Not even feedback from the speakers in the room. It's just as if the speakers were turned off, though their status showed them working perfectly. He just sat there, blinking in silence for about 30 seconds. Then he started to sob softly. He put his hands, or tentacles, over his eyes and cried quietly for a full minute. All the while, a sound in the background was very slowly getting louder. It was growling. It was still barely audible, though. It sounded like a slight breeze through a forest. The screen slowly begins to zoom in on his face. By slow, 
I mean, it's only noticeable if you look at the shots ten seconds apart from each side. His sobbing gets louder, more full of heart and anger. The screen then twitches a bit, as if it twists on itself, for a split second then back to normal. The wind through the tree sound gets slowly louder and more severe, as if a storm is brewing somewhere. The eerie part of the sound was Squidward sobbing. It sounded real, as if the sound wasn't coming from the speakers, as if the speakers were holes and the sound was going through from one side. As good a sound the studio likes to have, they don't purchase equipment to have good sound to that quality level. Below the sound of wooden sobbing, very faint, something sounded like laughing. It came in on intervals, and never lasted more than a second, so you had a hard time picking it. After 30 seconds of this, the screen blurred and twitched violently, and something flashed over the screen, as if a single frame was replaced. The lead animation editor paused and rewound frame by frame. What we saw was horrible. It was a still photo of a dead child. He couldn't have been more than six. The face was mangled and bloodied, one eye dangling over his upturned face. He was naked down to his underwear. His stomach was crudely cut open, and he had entrails lying beside him. He was lying on some pavement that was probably a road. The most upsetting part was there was the shadow of the photographer. There was no crime tape, no evidence of tags or markers. The angle was completely off for a shot designed to be evidence. It would seem the photographer was the person responsible for the child's death. We were of course mortified, but pressed on hoping that it was just a sick joke. The screen flipped back at Squidward, still sobbing louder than before, and half body in frame. There was now what appeared to be blood running down his face and his eyes. Blood was also done in a very realistic style, looking as if you touched it and you'd get it on your fingers. The wind sounded as if it were getting louder, blowing through the forest. There were even snapping sounds of branches. The laughing, a deep baritone, lasting at longer intervals and coming more frequently. After about 20 seconds, the screen began to get twisted and show a single frame photo. The editor was reluctant to go back. We all were, but he knew we had to. This time the photo was what appeared to be a little girl, no older than the first child. She was laying on her stomach her barrettes in a pool of blood next to her. Her left eye was also popped out, naked except her underpants. Her entrails were piled up on top of her, above another crude cut along her back. Again, the body was on the street, and the photographer's shadow was visible. Very similar in size and shape to the first. I had to choke back vomit, and one intern, the only female one in the room, ran out. The show resumed. After about five seconds, the second photo played. Squidward was silent, as did all the sound, like it was when the scene started. He put his tentacles down, and his eyes were now realistic, like the others from the beginning of the episode. They were bleeding, bloodshot, and pulsating. He just stared at the screen as if he were watching the viewer. After about ten minutes, he started sobbing, this time not covering his eyes. The sound was piercing and loud, and most fear-inducing. Tears and blood were dripping down his face at a heavy rate. The wind came back, and so did the deep voice laughing. And this time, the still photo lasted for a good five frames. The animator was able to stop it, and on the fourth, he backed up. This was the photo of a boy about the same age. But this scene was different. The entrails were just being pulled out of him from the stomach by a large hand. The right eye popped out dangling and blood trickling down it. That animator proceeded. It was hard to believe. But the next one was different. We couldn't tell what. He went on to the next. Same thing. He went back to the first and played them quicker. And I lost it. I vomited on the floor. The animating 
and sound editors were gasping at the screen. The five frames were not as if they were five different photos. They played out as if they were frames from a video. We saw the hands slowly lift out the guts, and we saw the kid's eyes focus on it. We even saw two frames of the kid beginning to blink. The lead sound editor told us to stop. He had to call the creator to see this Mr. Helberg arrive within 15 minutes. He was confused as to why he was called down there, so the editor just continued the episode. Once the few frames were down, all screaming and the all sound stopped. Squidward was just staring at the viewer. Full frame of the face for about three seconds. The shot quickly panned to a deep voice that said, Do it! And we see in Squidward's hands a shotgun. He immediately puts the gun to his mouth and he flies back with force. The last five seconds of the episode show the body on the bed. On his side, one eye dangling. Then the episode ends. Mr. Hillenberg is obviously angry at this. He demanded to know what the heck was going on. Most people left the room at this point, so it was just a handful of us to watch it again. Viewing the episode twice only served to imprint it in the entirety of my mind, because it gave me horrible nightmares. I'm sorry I stayed. The only theory I could think of was that the file was edited by someone in a chain of drawing in the studio there. The CTO was called in to analyze what happened. The analysis of the file showed that it was edited by new material. However, the timestamp of it was a mere 24 seconds before he began viewing it. All the equipment involved has been examined for foreign software and hardware, as well as glitches. As if the timestamp had glitched and showed the wrong time. But everything was checked out. Fine. We don't know what happened, and nobody does. There was an investigation due to the nature of the photos, but nothing came of it. No child seen identified, and no clues were gathered from the data involved, nor physical clues in the photos. I had never believed in unexplainable phenomena before, but I know that I have something happened that I can't prove. I just don't know anymore.